Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. Today is a beautiful day here in October in New England. The leaves have changed, and it's beautiful gold and reds and greens. It's uh, quite a sight here in New England this time of year. Uh, and it's just a wonderful day. It's about 70 degrees, so I thought I'd come out and do a little shooting, and I thought I'd bring you folks along. Um, today we're going to take a couple of Webleys, a Webley Eclipse um, right here. We have a beautiful Webley Eclipse that uh, you may have seen in another video. And we also have a really handy little Webley Tracker. And we're going to put them to the test and see uh, how they shoot today. We're going to try three different pellets in each gun and we'll shoot a couple of groups and we'll see what we do so it should be fun i'd like to invite you to stick around and thanks again for stopping by the pellets and pistons air gun channel okay so we'll begin with the webley tracker i'm not expecting as much from this gun as i am from the eclipse but uh, maybe it'll surprise us who knows uh, so we're going to try out three different pellets. We'll start with the Crossman Premier 7.9. We'll move on to the exact Diabolos that come in at 8.44 grains. And then finally we'll finish up with the H&N Sport, which I, I find shoot well in most air guns. And those are 8.18 grains. Uh, so without wasting any more time, let's get to it. We'll be shooting from left to right, starting with the top row. This is a side lever cocking tap loading 177 caliber air rifle makes it a little unique there's not too many guns like that around uh, but it's a it's a wonderful little rifle for all its faults it's still a fun gun to own um, the trigger on this thing is nothing short of atrocious it's like pulling a heavy stick out of thick mud <laughs> um, you really gotta uh, a long continuous pull when it finally breaks it, it breaks clean but it's a uh, it's just not a very good trigger uh, but the gun's probably not built for that sort of thing it's not built for precise shooting it's built more for carrying in the field so let's see how it groups and see if it can live up to that job all right so let's start we're going to start top left and we'll see how this thing does We're not so much shooting for the bullseye, we're shooting to see what kind of groups we can get. So don't pay attention to how far away from the bullseye we're hitting, because that's not really the point. Wow. Now, I haven't tuned this rifle yet. I have tuned the Eclipse, so um, now there's a little something there. <laughs> now, also, this scope has a 3 to 9 on it, where the Eclipse has a 4 to 12, so a little slight advantage there, too, because I am shooting at max power for both scopes. All right, shot number three. That one hit above the first one. This one's not performing all that impressively, is it? Maybe it just doesn't like these cross ones. We'll find out. Shot number four. Hmm. And lastly, shot number five. I'm not too impressed with those pellets. Let's move on to the uh, JSB Exact Diabolos and see how they do. Oh, okay, so next target to the right. That'll be the top center. hit high but dead center it's not even in the black that one 
and about a half inch left of the first one. It's already a little more promising than the uh, crossman pellets were. Let's see if we can keep that. Nope, that one just fell out of the group by about three inches. Well, I haven't had a lot of experience with this gun yet. Um, I've been busy with other things. I've, I've owned it now for about a month, but uh, I don't know. It looks like it might need some work. It's just not grouping the way it should. Yeah, it's all over the place. All right. I don't think we can blame this kind of wide grouping on just the pellets. I think maybe something's going on with the rifle. It probably needs a reseal, maybe. It's definitely going to get one. And shot number five is high and it's up there with the other three. So maybe the scope's moving on this gun. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but uh, not too impressed so far. All right, moving on to the H&M Sport Pellet. We'll see if they make any difference. I, you know, I really don't think that uh, the gun not liking pellets could account for groups the size of the ones that this gun's producing. So I think we got something else going on. But that's half the fun of spring piston air guns. Is there's always a little bit more you can do to make them shoot better. Low and left. High and left. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. That one hit a little closer to the first, but I'm starting to learn not to get my hopes up with this thing, so <laughs> we'll see. Now that one's down with the second one, so that's twice that that's happened. You get two to group and then seems to be jumping back and forth. I wonder if we have an issue with the scope. <laughs> now see that's three on the lower left but two in the upper left so who knows. But at any rate that's the Webley tracker. And we'll set her off to the side and we'll see how the Webley Eclipse does. Now this is a breech loading with a loading um, gate type of system, under lever cocking. So those two things make this one a little bit unique, especially this loading system. You lift this whole latch assembly up. Oops, we're going to start with those cross ones just like last time. So anyway, you lift the latch up and then you go ahead and insert one pellet right to the, directly into the rear of the barrel. Uh, it's a little easier than some of the other breech loaders because, whoops, yeah, here he says that and drops his pellet twice. <laughs> yeah, you get to be my age and these little 177 caliber pellets are a little tougher to manipulate. All right, so just snap the latch back down and you're good to go. <clears throat> this gun does have an automatic safety, whereas the Webley uh, tracker has a manual safety so each time I got to take that off <clears throat> this tr this trigger on this gun is a two-stage it's still a Webley trigger so I don't expect too much out of it but 
Let's see what we got. Yeah, that one shot a little low and right. But um, it's still already closer to the bullseye. So we'll see. Shot number two. These are the Crossman 7.9 Premier Pellet. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> I'd say that's a heck of a lot more promising, isn't it? Those two shots are touching. And by the way, this trigger is like night and day. It's so much better. So that can account for some of the accuracy issues that I'm having with the tracker. Is that trigger is really is atrocious. When I described it as pulling a stick out of the mud, that's exactly what it feels like. It's just really slow, heavy pull with a lot of creep, and then it finally lets go. So I'm sure that's not helping accuracy at all. Okay. That was shot number Number four. This is a really nice rifle, and as you can probably tell by the sound versus the way the tracker sounded, uh, that I tuned this gun, and uh, it shoots so smooth now, it's unbelievable. So that's another advantage it has over the tracker. I haven't done anything with the tracker yet. That's a that's a project for this winter when it's a little too cold to sit out here and shoot. We'll be inside tearing these things down and trying to make them shoot better. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, folks. It looks like it might have passed through one of the first four holes, but I don't know which one. All right, we'll move on to the exact Diabolo. Some people pronounce that Diablo. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that I was corrected once a long time ago and uh, told that it was Di uh, Diabolo or Diabolo. That's why I call them like that. If you guys are under the impression I'm pronouncing it wrong, feel free to let me know, but uh, I think I got it right. These are a domed pellet. They come in at 8.44 grains, I think it is. Yeah. I'll remember if I cock this gun. Okay. Safety off. I'm going for the center, lower target. Ooh, that's promising. This gun shoots so sweet. It's really a pleasure to shoot now. When I first got it, it had a buzz. Uh, and it's got an aluminum receiver, which makes it kind of unique in the air gun world. Uh, this tube on the back is not steel, it's aluminum. And uh, it had this very distinctive ring to it when you would fire the gun. This nice little high-pitched ping that you could hear. <laughs> it's a little distracting, but it was kind of funny at the same time. But that's gone now that we tuned it. I think the Eclipse might like the exacts a little better than it liked the Crossman. Shot number three. Oh, well that 
one just broke the group up a little bit. Don't forget, you can't discount the shooter when it comes to testing these guns out, so I'm sure that some of these shots are my fault versus the gun's fault. Yeah, it's still holding together a little better than the crossbones were. I believe that was four. Let's double check. Yeah, so this will be shot number five and the last shot with the exact diabolos. And then we'll move on to the H&M Sport, which are a wad cutter style pellet. They're the only wad cutter out of the three that we're shooting today. Um, the crossbone premieres are also a dome with a little uh, depression. They call them a hollow point. <laughs> I'd say that's not too bad. So the Web of the Eclipse seemed to like those uh, uh, exact diabolos. Let's see how it likes the Sport. H&M Sport pellets. These are 8.18 grains, so call it 8.2 grain. See how nice and quiet it cocks now. It just it shoots so smooth and sweet. This has a nice snap to it as far as the sound goes, and the recoil is um, just a pleasure. Just a smooth sense that you fired the gun. Alright, last target, bottom right. And these are H&M Sport 8.18 grain pellets. Again, we're not so concerned with hitting the bullseye as we are with keeping those pellet uh, impacts very close together. We're looking for tight grouping and that gives us a better indication on the accuracy of the gun. We can always adjust the scope to hit bullseye. But the idea is, will it hit bullseye consistently? Shot number three. Oh, I hate the count my chickens before they're hatched, but these H&M sports seem to uh, be pretty promising. Yeah, that was shot number four. shot number five okay so I think it's a, a pretty obvious decision here the uh, the winner is the H&N sport pellets with the Webley Eclipse but getting back to the tracker we were shooting three inch groups with that thing and regardless of what pellet we use so we've got an issue with that gun whether it be the scope or the rifle being uh, in, in need of a reseal uh, that has yet to be determined but uh, I'll certainly invoke, uh, invite you folks along for the video where we figure out what's going on with that and we go about correcting it so that, that should be a fun one too so I just want to thank you folks again for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun channel to ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already to hit the bell if you'd like to be reminded of future videos and by all means give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one thanks again folks have a great day